Uh, Mr. Speaker. I call the Honourable Member Maggie Barry. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, I rise with great pleasure to speak to the Arts Centre of Christchurch Trust Bill at its first reading. As the Chair of the Select Committee, the Local Government and Environment uh, Select Committee, I am delighted uh, that uh, the Honourable Nikki, K, uh, Nikki Wagner excuse me, has chosen to take this, um, this bill to our committee. Uh, it's a very good thing indeed, and of course she is extremely well placed, unlike a member in Auckland. Uh, Nikki Wagner understands only too well the importance of the Arts centre to the community of Christchurch. It's a, an essential part of the fabric, the history of the town. And as someone who studied horticulture uh, in Christchurch many, many years ago, uh, to me the building uh, really does typify what is quintessentially Christchurch. Uh, it is a magnificent building and uh, the, the, the one of the many tragedies that occurred after the earthquake, uh, the, the fact that um, all but one of the 23 art centre buildings were very, very badly damaged and it is wonderful indeed to see this magnificent building uh, that is being restored and being able to be used in a way that uh, will, will reflect the history of the city, uh, even when so much else all around it has changed. Uh, it seems to me that when you modernise and make modern and more fit for purpose a building of the importance of the Arts Centre, it's also very important to change the governance structures so that they too are able to reflect the changing needs of that building. And so to get people uh, in charge of that building who are able to have the skill set required to guide and, and push it through to the place where it needs to be. To be again a jewel in the crown of Christchurch City is indeed a very important thing. As Nikki Wagner pointed out at the outset in the opening call on this debate, 1.5 million visitors annually uh, used to visit it, and uh, of those, half of them came from outside the region. And I think when you look at the proud history of a building which, apart from the cathedral and uh, I also share other members' concerns that that is a building uh, that has not been restored uh, to the grandeur that it deserved to. Uh, but th the, the remaining buildings do need to be very carefully looked at and, and preserved. And piece by piece, stone by stone, uh, this magnificent building will arise and be fit for modern purpose. So uh, from my point of view, uh, when, you, when you have um, a building of this kind, which is so representative, um, it will enable the Arts Centre to modernise the governance arrangements. Uh, it will set out the objects of the trust in legislation, which will protect it and enshrine those protections. And it will also reflect as a baseline the cultural and heritage significance of the Arts Centre, but with that modern edge and with that post-earthquake edge as well. This is a bill that will ensure that the Arts Centre will be in a safe pair of hands in the short term and in the longer term, the vision for the future and the governance role of the directors will ensure that it remains relevant and remains uh, fit for purpose, no matter what challenges might occur for it in the future. I think that setting out the, uh, the Trust's current objections, uh, objectives rather, in legislation with the consequences uh, that they can only be changed by amendment to the legislation is a further strengthening, as important as the earthquake strengthening. It is important that people can't fiddle and tamper with something that uh, really needs to be able to just get on with the very challenging job uh, that it has for its future. Uh, as I this is a bill that provides for a skills-based board which will be appointed by an appointments committee. Sometimes in the past, uh, and, and I've seen it a little bit in, in Christchurch and in other places, uh, well-intentioned people who have got time on their hands and would like to get involved in a project do get involved in it, but there is more required than that sometimes. So with the best will in the world, that uh, very important decision-making role of who should be on a board and what are the skill sets that are required for it needs to be properly protected and enshrined uh, so that there is not going to be any misunderstandings. And given the amount of time, energy and resources that are put into this, uh, this bill and into the building itself, it's really important that it be in the future secured in perpetuity. So I think the objects of the Trust as set out in the legislation do need to be clearly distinguished from the powers of the Trust Board and that's all because those um, objects need to be advanced. So uh, along with the other reasons and uh, points that have been made by other speakers in this debate. I join with them in commending this bill to the House. I look forward to it coming before the Local Government and Select Committee and uh, going through due process in due course. Thank you, Mr Speaker. I call the Honourable Member...